five-minute walkthrough. Each team will be given a five-minute walkthrough to look over the tools and supplied materials in order to service the pump and prepare for the event. All tools that begin in the toolbox can be strategically repositioned, but must remain in the toolbox until the event starts. The same applies to the tools provided on the setup table. Those items cannot be placed in the toolbox until after the event starts. The tools and materials supplied on the setup table may be moved from the original position set up by the event judges. The toolbox and other supplied materials can be relocated but must start and end on the setup table. The setup table may not be moved. The toolbox must be latched but a lock will not be used. Any member that touches the cutter bar or impeller at any time during the setup and event must wear leather gloves. The hoist, trolley, and gantry must start and finish in the designated marked areas. You may adjust the position if desired during the five minutes. Exact positioning within the designated marked area is required after the event. The wheels must be facing the opposite of the setup table. All pins must be in their original position before and after the event. No work may be performed on the setup table. Hoist chain adjustment is allowed during the five minute setup. The tank, pump service table may not be moved prior to and during the event. During the five minute setup, the half inch drive torque wrench must be set to 50 foot pounds and the 3 8 inch drive set to 20 foot pounds. Both shall be confirmed by the designated judge. If the settings are not correct, the team member will be allowed to reset the torque settings. If the settings are still not correct, the judge will set it to the correct settings and a penalty will be assessed. The following can be completed on the electrical check sheet. Team name, date, and electrician's name. These items must be legible. Failure to comply with each of these steps will result in penalty assessment. Event task A, lockout tagout of control panel. Record power supply voltage to control panel. There will be a sticker on the supply cord plug indicating power supplied voltage. Before turning the pump off, take voltage test readings from the voltage test station and record on the electrical check sheet. The probe must be fully inserted into the test port. Proper finger positioning will be behind the guards of the test probes and will be required. Turn the multimeter to AC voltage. Check voltage between leg one and leg two and verbalize leg one, leg two voltage present and record voltage on sheet. Check voltage between leg two, leg three. Verbalize leg two, leg three voltage present. Record voltage on sheet. Check voltage between leg one and leg three. Verbalize leg one, leg three voltage present. Record voltage on sheet. Once complete, verbalize voltage present at pump station. Turn the pump off at the control panel. Verbalize pump is off. Isolate the power to the control panel using the main disconnect. Verbalize power is off. The electrician must write their initials and date on the tag with the dry erase marker. It must be legible. It must be written on the label, not directly on the tag itself. The date must be in the following format. Month, date, year. Perform lock and tag out procedure on the main breaker. Verbalize main disconnect locked out. Using a gang house on the main disconnect, all team members must lock out using the provided individual color coded locks. Zip ties will be used to attach tag to the lock. The electrician must use the red lock. The safety supervisor must use the yellow lock. Other team members can use any other color lock. All members must install their own lock and keep the lockout key on their person at all times while locked out. Once all locks are locked out, the last member must verbalize lockout verified. Once the main disconnect is locked out, 
the electrician can then use the provided multimeter to check power at the test port. The probe must be fully inserted into the test ports. Proper finger positioning will be behind the guards on the test probes and will be required. Turn the multimeter to AC voltage. Check voltage between L1 and L2. Verbalize L1, L2, no voltage. Check voltage between L2 and L3. Verbalize L2, L3, no voltage. Check voltage between L1 and L3. Verbalize L1, L3, no voltage. Once complete, verbalize no voltage present. The electrician will now check to see if the pump is isolated by turning the pump on by turning the switch to hand. If the pump does not turn on, the electrician will turn the switch back to the off position and state pump isolated. The safety supervisor will also check the pump to verify the pump has been isolated by turning the on switch to hand. If the pump does not turn on, the safety supervisor will turn the switch back to the off position and state pump isolated, safe to remove pump. No member can touch the pump or station unless they are locked out. The pump can now be removed. Step B, gantry assembly. The reed gantry will start fully folded and retracted with all pins in place. The team members will remove pins, rotate each support up and over the underside of the gantry. Place pins in their proper locations. Remove the pins on the legs so they can be angled outward. Reinstall pins in their proper location. Install trolley on gantry. Trolley must be installed in one of the three center holes of the gantry unit. Install chain hoist on the trolley. The gantry height will need to be extended high enough so that two holes are showing on the bottom to safely remove the pump from the tank. Ensure both bolts are installed on each end of the gantry. It does not matter which two of the three holes are used for the bolts when assembling the gantry. However, the bolts must be back in their original location and orientation at the end of the event. When moving the gantry, you must use two team members, one on each side. Step C, pump removal. Using two members, roll the gantry to the center position over the pump. Once centered, lock all four gantry wheels. Verbalize wheel locked individually for each wheel. Using the chain hoist, lower the chain hook and attach to the lift bale and raise the pump to the desired level to safely clear the tank wall. When removing the pump, be careful not to hit the wall, causing the wet well to move. If the wet well moves, a penalty will be assessed and you must return the wet well to the original location. The wheels of the gantry must be locked while a chain hoist is being raised or lowered. Unlock all four wheels of the gantry. Verbalize wheel unlocked individually for each wheel. Proceed to move the pump to the floor using a minimum of three members. One member on each end of the gantry and one member holding the pump secure to eliminate excessive swinging of the pump. Once the pump is set over the desired area on the floor, lock all four gantry wheels. Verbalize wheel locked individually for each wheel. Lower the pump to the floor in the vertical position in the marked box. Slightly lower the chain hoist and remove from the pump lift bale. Using the provided lifting sling, choke sling securely around the motor at the bottom bracket. Do not trap the electrical cord in the sling. If the lifting sling is installed incorrectly, the judge will notify the team member to properly secure the sling in the designated location. Choking the sling tight is of the utmost importance. Lower the chain hoist hook and attach to the lifting sling. Using two team members, one steady in the pump and the other operating the chain hoist, raise the pump to a horizontal position. The pump must be raised by the chain hoist only. Any lifting without the chain will be assessed as a penalty. 
Raise the pump high enough to clear the fixed pump cradle on the service table in the horizontal position. Unlock all four wheels. Verbalize wheel unlocked individually for each wheel. Proceed to move the pump to the pump cradle using a minimum of three members. One member on each end of the gantry and one member holding the pump secure to eliminate excessive swinging of the pump. Once the pump is correctly positioned over the pump saddle, lock all four gantry wheels. Verbalize wheel locked individually for each wheel. Lower the pump onto the pump cradle. A team member's hand must be on the motor to control the movement of the motor while installing the ratchet tie-down strap and must remain until the ratchet tie-down strap is secure. Using the provided ratchet strap, firmly strap the pump onto the service table and ratchet tight. No member is allowed to touch or begin work on the pump until the ratchet strap is safely secure or when the pump is being lowered or raised. Step D. Pump Rebuild Using two team members, remove the pump stand using the 9 16th ratchet wrench. Please note, two hands must be holding the stand at all times while removing the bolts. If the pump stand is dropped, falls, or is not gently placed on the service table, a safety penalty will be assessed. The pump stand must be placed on the service table. Using the provided aluminum bar, place it between the impeller and cutter bar fingers to loosen the cutter nut by using the half inch drive breaker bar and the one in 11 16 inch socket. This step must be done prior to removing the suction plate. Please note, any member that touches the cutter bar or impeller must wear leather gloves. Remove the last two bolts holding the suction plate to the casing and remove the suction plate and cutter bar. Note the location of these two bolts. You will need to reinstall two replacement bolts in the same holes. Rotate the shaft that the impeller keyway is in the 12 o'clock position. Remove impeller and key. Please note the team member handling the impeller must wear leather gloves. Wipe shaft using shop rag three times. Verbalize each wipe. Using air nozzle, blow out shaft keyway and threads for a five second count. Verbalize 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1000. Install new impeller key. Note, impeller key is one inch long, three eighths wide, and five sixteenths high. Improper installation of the keyway will not allow the impeller to slide into the proper position. Install new impeller. Install cutter nut. Using air nozzle, blow out the six exposed threaded casing holes for one second count. Verbalize one one thousand for each hole. Install cutter bar with one of the cutter bar fingers pointing at the discharge flange. Install the two alignment pins, verbalizing three half turn rotations for each pin. Install suction plate with the new fasteners hand tight at three o'clock and nine o'clock in the reference to the discharge flange at 12 o'clock position. Using the 3H drive torque wrench, torque the suction plate fasteners to 20 foot pounds. You must use the torque wrench as a ratchet for this task. Install the aluminum bar between the impeller and cutter bar as a jam. Using the half inch drive torque wrench, torque the cutter nut to 50 foot pounds. You must use the torque wrench as a ratchet for this task. Reinstall the pump stand using two team members. Using the 3H drive torque wrench, torque the pump stand fasteners to 20 foot pounds. You must use the torque wrench as a ratchet for this task. Using leather gloves, rotate pump by hand to ensure it rotates smooth and free from any interference. Verbalize pump rotates smooth and free. Place fasteners that were removed back in the appropriate bags and seal. Step E. Change bolts and install new flange nozzle. Remove the flange bolts that connect the flange nozzle to the discharge flange. Remove old flange nozzle and gasket from the discharge flange. Install the new flange nozzle and gasket using new flange bolts and using the 15 16 ratchet wrenches, tighten so that they are snug and cannot be turned by hand. 
Ensure proper torque cross pattern is used. Install flat washer, lock washer, and nut in that order. Nut must be at least flush with the end of the bolt. Place fasteners that were removed back in the appropriate bags and seal. Step F, electrical motor checks. Safety supervisor and electrician must be locked out before the motor or power cables are disconnected. Unplug the motor control cable from the control panel. The cable is located on the left side of the control panel and is marked motor control. Using the provided multimeter, turn the selector to resistance. Perform and record the falling resistance checks on the control cable. Moisture probes W1 to W2, terminal 4 and terminal 2. Thermals P1 to P2, terminal 5 and terminal 1. Ground to P1, terminal 3 to terminal 1. Ground to P2, terminal 3 to terminal 2. Ground to W1, terminals 3 to terminal 4. Ground to W2, terminal 3 to terminal 5. After recording the resistance checks on the electrical check form, reinstall the control cable back into the control panel. Unplug the motor power cable from the control panel. It is located on the bottom right side of the control panel. Using the provided multimeter, turn the selector to resistance. Perform and record the following resistance checks on the motor power cable. T1 to ground, T2 to ground, T3 to ground, T1 to T2, T2 to T3, T3 to T1. After recording the resistance checks on the provided form, reinstall the power cable plug back into the control panel. Inspect the entire length of both cables, the control and power, for damage at the marked two foot intervals. One hand must be placed in each two foot section, making sure that one hand is always in contact with the cable. Once inspected, verbalize control cable OK and power cable OK and document on electrical check form. Once the pump is on and secured to the work table, record the following motor information. Motor voltage note. The motor final voltage will be hand stamped on the tag just below the motor information tag. Motor FLA. Record motor FLA for the motor final voltage. Step G, removing pump from the work table and cradle. Reposition, if necessary, the gantry over the pump laying in the horizontal position and ensure all four wheels are locked. Verbalize wheel locked individually for each wheel. Remember, the chain hoist cannot be adjusted while moving the gantry. With the gantry wheels locked, Reattach the chain hook onto the lifting sling and adjust chain to apply tension to the sling. No slack. Any slack in the chain will result in a penalty assessment. The tension must be sufficient enough to support the motor should it slip out of the cradle. A team member's hand must be on the motor to control the movement of the motor while removing the ratchet tie-down strap and must remain until the ratchet tie-down strap is released. Release and remove the ratchet tie-down strap. Lift the pump up high enough to safely clear the work table and cradle. Unlock the wheels. Verbalize wheel unlocked individually for each wheel. Proceed to move the pump to the floor using a minimum of three members. One member on each end of the gantry and one member holding the pump secure to eliminate excessive swinging of the pump. Lock all four wheels. Verbalize wheel locked individually for each wheel. Lower the pump onto the floor in the marked box in a vertical position and detach from the lifting sling. Remove the lifting sling prior to lifting the pump. Attach the chain hook onto the lift bale. Lift pump up into the vertical position high enough to safely clear the tank wall. Unlock the wheels, 
verbalize wheel unlocked individually for each wheel. Proceed to move the pump to the tank using a minimum of three members, one member on each end of the gantry and one member holding the pump secure to eliminate excessive swinging of the pump. Position the gantry and pump over the wet well and ensure all four wheels are locked. Verbalize wheel locked individually for each wheel. Lower the pump to the required pump placement area inside the wet well making sure that the pump is targeted toward the appropriate color as determined by the nozzle color, either red or yellow. When lowering the pump, be careful to not hit the wall, causing the wet well to move. If the wet well moves, a penalty will be assessed and you must return the wet well to the original location. Once the chain is unhooked from the lifting bale, you are not allowed to touch or reposition the pump or a penalty will be assessed. However, if the pump set is determined by the team member to be inaccurate, you can then reattach the chain hook to the lifting bale, lift pump enough to reposition correctly. Of course, ensuring the wheels are in locked position. Step H, disassemble gantry. Unlock wheels, verbalize wheel unlocked individually for each wheel. Move the gantry from the tank area using two team members. Lower the gantry risers to the starting position. Bolts shall be installed in the top and bottom holes leaving the middle one open. The black nuts shall be installed facing outward from the gantry with the bolt heads facing inward. Remove chain hoist and trolley from gantry beam. Fold gantry up. The legs on the wheel end must lay down first. Place gantry back to within the marked area. The wheels must be facing the opposite of the setup table. Reinstall all pins in the gantry and trolley. Pins shall be inserted on the same side as they are attached to the gantry and trolley. Place the trolley and chain hoist to within the marked areas. Touching the tape marks or over the tape marks is not acceptable. Step I, restore power to the control panel. Once the pump is set, team members may remove their locks. The electrician's lock is last to be removed. Remove all locks and tags and turn main breaker to the on position. Verify voltage at the test ports. The probe must be fully inserted into the test ports. Proper finger positioning will be behind the guards on the test probes and will be required. Turn the multimeter to AC voltage. Check voltage between leg one and leg two. Verbalize leg one, leg two, voltage present. Record voltage on sheet. Check voltage between leg two and leg three. Verbalize leg two, leg three, voltage present. Record voltage on sheet. Check voltage between leg one and leg three. Verbalize leg one, leg three, voltage present. Record voltage on sheet. Once the verified voltage is documented on the form, the electrician must verbalize voltage verified OK, the pump is safe to turn on. At this time, no team member can touch the pump station or pump. The safety supervisor can then verbalize safe to turn the pump on. The electrician shall then turn the pump on. The electrician will need to finish filling out the electrical check sheet and the safety supervisor will need to sign it. Once the electrical check sheet is complete, place it on the setup table before leaving the event area. If not left on the setup table, a penalty will be assessed. Once the pump is back in service, the power and control cable for the pump must be laid out in the marked area. No portion of these cables shall touch the boundary lines. Step J, cleanup. Prior to leaving the event area, all tools that started in the toolbox must be returned to the toolbox in no particular order. Any tools not returned to the toolbox will be assessed as a penalty. Prior to leaving the event area, all items that were placed on the setup table must be returned to the setup table in no particular order. Any items not placed on the setup table or in the toolbox will be assessed a penalty. 
The toolbox lid must be securely closed and latched. No lock will be used. Leave the event area and the team captain must verbalize stop.